was an independent Labour Party, the Democrats are not on our side, the Republicans are fascists, and we need to get organized today, right now, for reproductive justice. Thank you. Hello, everybody. You just call me Love Eat Hen. Um, I'm here to say that I don't want anybody telling me to go fucking vote because this did not happen by anyone voting. This was taken away from us. And I'm tired of hearing, go vote, give the Dems my money. No, they had all this time to codify it and they waited. They waited and waited and took people's money. They took people's hopes. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of looking at the green wave happen throughout Latin America and not here. So let's That's get right. this shit fucking started, okay? Yes, look, the green wave is so important. This, this green bandana is where we take inspiration from. Latin America, Colombia, Mexico, Argentina, where young women and young people took to the streets. And they didn't just take the streets like hell. And they decriminalized abortion in a deeply Catholic country. And exactly like she just said, why can this country look like that right now? And it needs to. It needs to. We are going to be out here all day. We're going to be out here tomorrow at 1 p.m. We're going to have a concert in these streets. And I want to see all of you out there. Okay, who else wants to come out and speak? Hello, I'm from Latin America, which is a, where the Green Bandana movement originated. Many countries there recently legalized abortion. And a part of me hoped that I would never see it in the States, because that would mean that our rights were under attack. But yet, here we are, and the worst has come to pass. And I know a lot of people may feel frustrated uh, about what has happened, but we gotta keep fighting. We can't give up now. We gotta keep fighting because First, it's abortion, and what's next? Contraceptives, gay marriage, they're just gonna keep going and going. And just because we're in California, doesn't mean we're safe. So, we gotta keep fighting. Fight to overturn this decision, and by any means necessary, okay? Exactly, we cannot. Look, a lot of people are saying, oh, California, New York, the sanctuary state. No, that is an underground railroad. We cannot live that way. We have to take to the streets now. Demand that they reverse this decision now. Yes! Demand that they reverse this decision now. Yes! Supreme Court. Yes! And we have to take to the streets now. Get into the streets today, every day, bring society to a grinding halt. All right, so I'm gonna have, who else wants to come up and say? Uh, I'm out here today, my name is Chris. I'm a student from Boston. I'm trans, I have a uterus, and this is not just about women's rights. This is about everybody who has a uterus, everybody who experiences reproduction in any way, shape, or form. Yes. This is about the precedent that we are setting to remove the ability to marry who you fucking want. This is about removing the precedents that we have set that protect our liberties as Americans. This is about removing the precedents that we have set that set our very rights that are set in the Constitution, our rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of friggin' happiness. We cannot have those basic human rights without access to abortion, without access to contraception, without access to comprehensive, equitable, reproductive care that centers women who have been marginalized, centers trans people, centers the poor women in our country, the single mothers, the women of color, the trans women of color. We cannot make progress until we start centering those groups and treating this like the public health crisis that it actively is. Oh yeah. That's right. I saw somebody else. You the best decision I have ever made. They tell you that you're going to regret your decision to have abortion. Y'all, I got a lot of regrets. 
my abortion ain't one of them, okay? I had an abortion and I worked in abortion rights. I was a clinic escort in Little Rock, Arkansas and in Dallas, Texas. I've watched the way they have chipped away at our rights for years. The idea of abortion being a choice has been an illusion for a long time. There are so many people in this country who even though abortion is available to them technically and legally, it is not available to them in reality and actuality. And that is only going to become worse. I was lucky to be a white woman with $600 in Arkansas when it was still legal because there are so many people that even when it was legal were not able to access abortion and they suffered for it. These rich people make these decisions that they don't have to live with. They make decisions that you have to live with. You have to hold your friends and family when they cry because they can't get an abortion. You have to explain to their other children why they are gone when they die because they could not have an abortion. When I was a clinic escort, I heard so many stories that were in poverty because they didn't have health care, because they didn't have the things that should already be guaranteed to them as human beings, such as housing, food, and water. They're illegitimate. 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 is an atrocity. Like this sister just said, these Christian fascists have been working for decades, decades, to control and to subjugate half of society that is women. right now. Donald Trump put three conservative justices on the Supreme Court. Donald Trump was not even elected by the popular vote, okay? We are being led by this conservative minority and I need all of you to bring this spirit and your livelihood to the November elections because we need to elect people that represent our values. Even in California in June, the voting numbers were abysmal. We have to get people to the voting booths. And this archaic way of calling people on the phone and saying, go vote for this candidate, go do that. It's not peace in the fact that I was able to have a choice because I knew for whatever reasons I wasn't ready. But then I think about like, what, okay, what if I was born in a state? I could have gone to jail for something that I didn't even know I was pregnant, you know? Like I got pregnant because I took fucking antibiotics on the plan B. So that's like a fucking, like don't fucking tell me contraceptives are gonna fucking work. You never know for whatever reason why you could be that 1% that just so happens to get pregnant. Um, and that shit's, I look up pissed. Like, what the fuck? This is a fucking class issue. You think like all of us are gonna be able to get an abortion or something? No, it's for the fucking 1% that has the money to go fucking travel to find the care for those abortions and stuff. I think about who my mom was and how she didn't have those decisions to have an abortion. She was with us without a choice. Um, it's a fucking issue against gay marriage. It's against our fucking privacy. Like these fucking flow apps and shit, they track your ovaries and your periods and shit. And that should get sold to fucking Facebook. Like this yeah. is a fucking joke. Yeah. And I think about like, had I been a month from now, two months from now, where the fuck would I have been? I would be fucking fighting for my fucking life in a fucking jail cell 
begging for something that like I just fucking basic fucking rights dude like um, and I'm standing here today and I just feel empowered over people that support me and would have supported me without me even knowing right and I think about how I myself am a pansexual how it would affect me if I happen to end up being married or wanting to get married to someone that isn't a hetero fucking white anglophone man you know like <laughs> not to be like me but I, I just felt like but this is fucking bullshit and those fucking three like stupid like nominated people that trust Sorry. you got it so again i want to invite other people from whatever perspective you're coming from why you're out here why other people need to take to the streets and stay in the streets and demand that this decision be reversed now okay so supreme court keep your legal decision out of our fucking uterine <laughs> Y'all put Trump in office, and I couldn't vote. Y'all said we were hysterical for thinking Roe v. Wade would be overturned. Look at where we are today. And if y'all have seen Thomas's concurrent opinion to, this, to today's decision, more of our rights are on the executioner's block. We're talking gay marriage, rights to contraceptives. They're all next. Anti-abortion advocates need another target, and they're the rest of our fucking human rights. <laughs> to all the Democrats sitting pretty in your office with your corporate money, fuck all of y'all for not doing anything. You sat there and watched as bans were put into place, and you did nothing for us. So fuck all of y'all saying we should vote. Are doing nothing for us. We need direct action in the streets. If you're sitting on your ass at home and you're feeling comfortable thinking you're safe, your rights are next. So get your ass off the couch, turn up, and turn out. talked about uh, businesses getting behind, you know, speaking up for women's rights, right? And, and gay rights. With, with all those rainbow emojis on Instagram, well, where are they when our rights get taken away? Am I right? Make some noise. Yeah. So, as a CEO, as a female founder, I want to read a statement that we wrote from Gritty and Pink. As a platform that prides itself on uplifting women's voices within music, we are saddened and angered by the overturn of Roe v. Wade. This ruling will and is already affecting women across this country, especially women of marginalized backgrounds who already have trouble having access to health care in this right. country. Basically, we want to make this very clear. We will not back down. We will not go back. No one in this country should have to fight for their basic human rights. beautiful right we out here this is inspirational this I'm looking at the signs hundred percent of unwanted pregnancies are caused by men regulate men's bodies what a, what a, what an idea this is a war on women the street stop sending money to Nancy Pelosi and stop putting your fucking money where your mouth is donate to fucking women donate to non-binary people donate to indigenous people people who are actually gonna have to put their lives on the chopping block because they're who are abortion are at risk. I guarantee you that your Democratic Senate being a debate topic. When is this shit gonna end? Get your ass out onto the street and start protesting like you fucking mean it. United States even was created. They didn't care about people to begin with, but they really, really, really don't like us. And I realized that I was talking to my mother today as I was on the way here to the rally, telling her I was coming, I was coming. And she would be here, but she doesn't live here. She lives out of state. And she told me, she says that, you know, it's interesting because men, it's not all men, because look at here, we got a lot of guys here who are willing to support us and stand up for us and have a voice. I mean, I want to say that my husband over there 
is a great, great man because he listens to the news and this morning he woke up and told me first what happened. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my God, I was outraged. And he was actually outraged too. He was yelling and screaming and thinking, how dare they do that? So I know there's guys out there who really, really don't want this either because you know what they realize? And this is the truth. They realize that this is the beginning of hell because it's not just us. It never was just us women. It never was just us little kids. It's now men too. It's going to be everybody. And that's what they're on their way to doing, believe it or not. They're, they're starting it. It's been going on for a really long time. But this one push really, really is going to be, I mean, the pro-life people, this is what they wanted. And, the, and it's not so much that men hate women. It's the people in power who don't like people. And they don't like people. And, and I don't want to like cause a controversy, but believe it or not, in the beginning of all of this, and this one, and sadly, I did find out because I was Googling it and looked it up and everything, this one woman who was happened to be crazy kept pushing this and pushing this and pushing this. And they had it all over the news a while back about her trying to do ahead and do this. And I realized, this is what my mother brought up, is that there are some women who just hate other people, who just hate women, and that's why they do this. You know, and I don't think that one person should have the right to speak for everybody. And I don't think that this should be happening now. And I, I fear for this country, I really do, because it's on a downhill now. And we have to, we can't give up. They didn't give up a long time ago in the 70s or 60s. We can't give up now. We can't let this protest be the last thing that we do today or tomorrow. We have to spread the word. We have to tell everybody what's going on. And we have to get people to realize that it's not just happening to us, it's happening to everyone. And so that's that's why I'm here. I was crying. I was very sad. And we should be crying. We should be fucking sad. Because this is the beginning of something we never wanted to happen. And now this country's changing. It's changing. And it's not changing for the best. Sadly, it's not. And the generations to come are going to end up facing this turmoil when we're gone. And what was also interesting is that I felt like, because the older generation of men, the ones in power, and the older generation of women, the ones in power, because there are women up there too as well, is that they want this, they're, they're, they're standing up. This is their last fucking stand. It's their last fucking stand. Because that generation is dying off. You think in 20 years? We abortion on command. All right, saying, don't come out of the way of the Okay, all right, everybody clear around the truck.